Hello and welcome to chapter 11. We are going to look at section 11.1 .1 today and this deals with sequences and series. When we talk about the phrase um, that something is in sequence, this means that we have some collection of data that is being ordered so that it has a first term or member, a second term or member, a third term or member, and so on. Now each of the numbers in a sequence is what we call a term. And a sequence is a function whose domain is a set of consecutive integers. So in other words, we're, we're just going to be going in consecutive order. Now if the domain is not specified, we will always assume that it starts with 1. Now if we look at sequences 1 and 2, um, as indicated right down here. If you notice, sequence 1 goes 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and it stops at 15. This is what we call a finite sequence because it has a last term. Now sequence 2 goes 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and then we've got these dots. These three dots here means that this sequence continues on. Because it continues on without stopping, we say that sequence 2 is an infinite sequence. Now both sequences have a general rule. So both of them have a general rule that looks something like a sub n equals 3n. Now what this n here means is that if I take my first term or my a sub 1 term, whatever I plug in for n, I'm going to plug in for n over here. So if I plug a 1 in for this n, I'm going to plug a 1 in here. So we would say a sub 1 is equal to 3 times 1. So this n value or 1 in this case represents the, the nth term of the sequence. So this would equal 3. If I wanted to do the third term, or my a sub 3 term, I'm going to go 3 times, and I'm going to replace n with a 3, and this gives me 9. And you'll see that if I go, here's my first term, my second term, my third term here, I ended up with 9, just like I did when I calculated it. We can also, re instead of writing the a sub n, we can also write it as f of n equals 3n, or a function in terms of n equals 3n. So example 1 says to write the first six terms of, and we're going to start out looking at part a right here that says a sub n equals 5 minus n. So what we're going to do for my a sub 1 term, I'm going to plug in a 1 for every n, so I end up with 5 minus 1, which equals 4. For my a sub 2 term, I'm going to plug in a 2 for n, so I end up with 5 minus 2, which equals 3, and I'm going to continue to do this for all of my n values that are indicated. So 5 minus 3 then becomes 2. 5 minus 4, this gives us 1. 5 minus 5 equals 0. And 5 minus 6 equals a negative 1. So these numbers right here are what we call our terms. And these are the first six terms of the sequence a sub n equals 5 minus n. For part b, we're going to use f of n equals 5 to the nth power. So when I go to solve for a sub 1, I'm going to take my 5 and plug a 1 in for n. So 5 to the first equals 5. For my second term, we have 5 to the second, which equals 25. Our third term is 5 to the third, which equals 125. Our fourth term is 5 to the fourth which equals 625. Our fifth term is 5 to the fifth, which is 3,125. 
And our sixth term is 5 to the 6th, which equals 15,625. For example 2, it says to describe the pattern, write the next term, and then write a rule for the nth term of the sequence. So when we look at part A, which is right here, part A gives me 2 fifths, 2 twenty fifths, 2 120 fifths, and 2 620 fifths. Now what I do when I solve these is I will actually write down below my term, I'm going to put an N, and I know that this is my first term, this is my second term, my third term, and my fourth term. And the reason I do this is because I know that when I write or try to figure out my pattern, I have to, I'll be plugging in a 1 for the first term, a 2 into something for the second term, a 3 into this equation for the third term, and so on. So I'm going to try to find a common theme that's going on with these. So when I do this, I notice that all four terms have a 2 in the numerator. So I'm going to say 2 divided by. Now I have something with a 1 will give me 5, and if I do something with a 2 it gives me 25, something with a 3 gives me 125. So I start to think, if I go 5 to the first, I get 5 in my denominator. If I go 5 to the second, I get 25. If I go 5 to the third, I get 125. And if I go 5 to the fourth, I get 625. So it kind of looks like I've created a pattern here or found the pattern. So the next part here says the next term is. Well, the next term has to be 2 divided by 5 to the fifth term. And 2 divided by 5 to the fifth is actually 2 divided by 3,125. And then it says a rule for the nth term is, well a rule is going to be what can I plug in, I need some type of an equation or formula. So I can go a sub n is equal to and all of my numerators were 2, and they all had a 5 in the denominator, and that 5 was being raised to a power of n. So this right here then would be the rule for my nth term. For part b, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write a 1 below the 3, a 2 below the 5, 3, and 4, and these represent my n values. So I know that if I do something with 1, I'm going to get a 3, if I do something with a 2, I'll get a 5. If I do something with a 3, I'm going to get 7. And if you play around with these numbers, it kind of looks like you get something like 2 times 1 plus 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 will give me 3. Then I can go 2 times 2 plus 1 will give me my 5, then I can go 2 times 3 plus 1 gives me 4, or I'm sorry, 7, and if I do my next term, which I don't think I can fit on here, but I can go 2 times 4 plus 1, that's going to give me 9. So it looks like this is kind of the general trend that's going. So if that's the case, then for my next term I should be able to go 2 times 5 plus 1, and this would give me 11. And the rule then becomes a sub n is equal to 2n plus 1. Now for a story problem, it says each swing of a pendulum is 3 inches less than the preceding swing. The first swing is 6 feet. We need to write a rule for the length of each swing in inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that 6 feet. I'm going to multiply that by 12 inches per 1 foot. And this is going to give us 72 inches. So this is my initial point or my a sub 1 term. 
So I know that a sub 1 is equal to 72 inches. Now to write a formula or a rule, I need to come up with an equation and we'll call this a sub n. And when I plug in my n value, I know that I'm going to have to subtract 3 inches less than the previous term. So I'm going to be subtracting 3 n. So, and I know for my a sub 1 term, so a sub 1 was equal to 72, which equaled, and I'm going to just call an x in here because I have to figure out what that was, minus 3 times 1. So if I add this 3 right here to both sides, I'm going to end up with 75 equals x. So that tells me then that I can rewrite my a sub n equation as 75 minus 3 sub n, or 3 times n. And this here would be my general formula. Next, we're going to look at what we call summation notation. And what summation notation means is that we are going to sum or add up all of our terms. Now, summation notation uses sigma. Sigma is this E-looking thing. It is an actual Greek letter, okay, and it means to sum or add up all of the terms. And with this notation, we have a couple pieces we need to look at. This right here, this is what we call the index of the sum. Okay, and it's also the lower limit. So this is kind of where we are starting. So this is our lower limit. And this number here is our upper limit. Okay, now if n equals infinity, okay, because typically this would be an, an n right here where the 5 is. Now if we have an infinity where that 5 is, then that tells us that our sequence continues without an end. It's just going to go on and on forever. So example 4 says use this series using, or write this series using summation notation. So I'm going to start out summation notation. Looks like sigma, and I'm going to start at i equals 1. Okay, because I'm going to start out when n equals 1 here. And then this is my second term, this is my third term, and this is my nth term. And I don't know what that is yet. And I, I will figure that out here in a second. But what I need to do, first of all, is I need to figure out what is giving me this 4, this 8, this 12. Okay, so if we look at an equation, how can I get, if I plug in a 1, what's going to give me 4? If I plug in a 2, how can I plug in a 2 and get an 8? Or plug in a 3 and get a 12? So my equation then is a sub n is really equal to, it looks like 4 times n, because 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, and so on. Now when I plug this into my summation, instead of writing an n, I'm going to write 4i, because I'm going to plug in this i equals 1, this is where I'm starting, so when I plug a 1 in for i, I get 4 times 1, which is 4, or this term here, and now I have to figure out 4 times what is going to give me 100. And this 100 is actually 4 times 5. So this right here is a summation from 1 to 5 of 4i. And now I'm going to do the same thing for part b. So for part b, we have the summation at i equals 1. And I don't know what n is yet, although I notice that I have this dot, dot, dot. So that dot, 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 if you remember, re implies that it's going on to infinity because it's going on forever. So I'm going to go infinity up top. And now I have to figure out how I'm getting this 2 for my first term. When I plug in a 2, how do I get 3 fourths? When I plug in a 3, how do I get 4 ninths? If I plug in a 4, how do I get 5 sixteenths? When I look at this, I notice that my numerator, my 3, my 4, my 5, is 1 greater than my nth term. So I can go 
n plus 1, and I'm dividing that by, and if, if I'm plugging in n into my denominator, so I'm plugging a 2 into my de denominator, I'm getting a 4. If I plug a 3 into the denominator, I'm getting 9. A 4, I'm getting 16. It looks like I'm squaring my denominators. So then I have n squared. So I've come up with the equation now, and this is the summation notation then for that series. Now, if you notice, for example 5, it says find the sum of the series. Now, instead of using the i, we're actually using a k. That's all right. It's just a variable. You can use any letter for the index of the sum. Also, if you notice, I'm not starting out at 1 anymore. I'm actually starting out 5, and that too is okay. So when I go to solve this and I find the sum of this series, I'm actually going to start out at a sub 5, and this is going to give us 5 squared plus 1, which is going to be 26. Then I have a sub 6, which is 6 squared plus 1, which is 37. I'm going to do my seventh term which is a sub 7, or 7 squared plus 1. So 7 squared is 49 plus 1 is 50. My eighth term is going to give us 8 squared plus 1, which is 65. My ninth term is going to give us 9 squared plus 1, which is 82. And our tenth term is going to give us 10 squared plus 1, which is 101. Now if we add all of these terms up, because remember we're doing a sum, when I add all of these up, we will get 361. So if I add up the sum of k squared plus 1 from the fifth term up through the tenth term, we'll get 361. The last thing we're going to look at are formulas for special series. This is something that I will give you, you don't have to memorize. But what you notice is if I'm taking the sum of a constant, or 1 in this case, it's just going to give me whatever I plug in for n. If I'm taking the sum of i, we're going to use this formula. And if I'm going to take the sum of i squared, I can use this formula. And the way we're going to do this is it says evaluate the sum from 1 to 10 of i squared. So if I use my formula, which was given as n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. All you have to do is plug this 10 in because it's in the n spot. So this is going to give us 10 times 10 plus 1 times 2 times 10 plus 1 divided by 6. So I have 10 times 11 times 21 all divided by 6, and if I simplify that, we end up with 385. And that concludes section 11.1.